Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. It's not easy on on the pet, um, and I'm sure it's not easy for the adopter to make that decision either. So a lot of times we are seeing fosters returned, um, but, you know, I would say we are seeing a, a few more cases of that now. I, I also like the idea of the picking up the keys and then going to cook. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, playing with their yeah. mind. It's great. It just kind of throws them off a little bit to where, you know, um, they don't instantly think, oh, no, you're grabbing your keys. Let me panic. You're going right. to be gone, you know. They know. They know when you're when you're getting ready to leave because they pick up on those cues. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Shula Newman, filling in for Sarah Fenske. Summer is always a rough time for pets. It's hot, there are fleas and ticks, and it seems like there's a never-ending boom of fireworks around the 4th of July to scare our four-legged friends. But this summer, a lot of pets adopted during the pandemic have to deal with something else. Their owners are no longer home all day. They're returning to the office. Animal shelters are seeing more adopted animals and foster pets return to their facilities, although not as much as expected. Joining us now about what's happening in area shelters and how to help your pet adapt to the new reality, the new new reality, is Andrea Wilkie, Stray Rescue's Director of Operations. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me, Sheila. You're welcome. Tell me, did Stray Rescue see a lot of people adopting pets during the spring last year? Yeah, we did. We got a, you know, a pretty good increase of um, interested foster families as well as adopters. Um, So we were getting, you know, hundreds of applications each week, um, which was, which was great for us. Um, It was, it was also an increase in intake. So, you know, people kind of stepping up and willing to foster or willing to adopt that maybe wouldn't have been if they wouldn't have been at home. Um, You know, that was, that was awesome to see so many people stepping up. Mm-hmm. And now this spring and summer, what what's the trend? Yeah, so I mean, like you mentioned, summer is also always kind of a difficult time. Um, you know, families are traveling or going on vacation. So a lot of times we are seeing fosters returned. Um, but, you know, I would say we are seeing a, a few more cases of that now. You know, families weren't going going on vacations last summer or traveling as much. So now they are taking advantage of that. So we're seeing fosters definitely returned. Um, you know, our adoption numbers haven't greatly increased, which is which is amazing. But, I, you know, there are a few cases that people are returning to work and and are having maybe behavioral issues with that, with their animals, or um, just maybe returning to, to a, a longer day that they're not able to care for their pets. And that is emotionally hard. As a pet owner, I can kind of relate to that. Um, but sure. do people like the option of returning a pet to the shelter is really not ideal, right? I mean, it seems like it would do more harm than good. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it it may take a little time to get them into a new routine, but even if you're working longer hours, um, you know, there are plenty of resources, whether it's training or, you know, several dog walking services or doggy daycare or something like that, that if your, your pets are able to do that, you know, Something along those lines is definitely a better option than returning returning a pet to a shelter. You know, it's it's not easy on on the pet, um, and I'm sure it's not easy for the adopter to make that decision either. But um, there are so many other resources to kind of explore before resulting to surrendering your pet to a shelter. Well, let's talk about some of those other options. You did mention, of course, training, but sure. would you advise people maybe to incrementally leave their pet home longer and longer? Like, how do you get yeah, your pet a- accustomed to suddenly not having their people around? Yeah, and that's something, you know, if you know that you're going back to work soon, that you can kind of start working with them gradually, um, finding a a quiet place, whether they're they're crated or um, you have them separated in a room. Um, but yeah, starting with 
uh, very small increments of time. So, you know, putting them in that crate or in that room and then stepping outside for five minutes, um, checking on them and coming back so that they kind of realize that you will come back um, and that you, you know, you aren't leaving them forever. Um, Mm -hmm. And just kind of working up over time on longer intervals, that's definitely something that we recommend. Um, Also, you know, it's easy since we've all been home a lot more that um, your pets actually pick up on cues, like picking up your keys or putting on your shoes and they instantly know that you're leaving. Um, So, you know, even just every now and then, even if you're staying home the rest of the night, picking up your keys, putting on your shoes and then just cooking dinner and and not actually leaving, it kind of takes away the drama of that cue whenever it does become time to leave. Um, It's not, it's not as dramatic for your pet to, to see that happening and they know that you're leaving the house. Um, and then, you know, definitely making sure that when you are home, um, getting them some physical exercise, taking them for a daily walk, even mental stimulation, feeding them with uh, games and puzzles, things like that, that can actually help them if, if they are being left alone throughout the day, they are getting some of that physical exercise and mental stimulation that, that they need. That's really great advice. I, I also like the idea of the picking up the keys and then going to cook. That's, like, that's yeah, playing with their yeah. mind. It's so great. It just kind of throws them off a little bit to where, you know, um, they don't instantly think, oh, no, you're grabbing your keys. Let me panic. You're going right. to be gone, you know. Um, and it's something that we don't ever think about. But if you kind of pay attention, they, they know. They mm-hmm. know when you're when you're getting ready to leave because they pick up on those cues. Yeah. Um, we received a question from on our Facebook page from Jennifer. Uh, this is also a really great question for your advice. She says that she is absolutely keeping her pandemic pets, but she noticed that her dogs um, and some others aren't well socialized because of how long mm-hmm. her family stayed away from other people. She writes, we're struggling to overcome fear of strangers with one of our dogs who's just now eight months and had very little interaction with strangers for the mm-hmm. first six months of her life. What do you recommend that they do? Yeah, so, you know, uh, we have a lot of resources on our uh, website that can kind of help with that. We also have um, our trainers available too. Even if they didn't adopt their pet from Stray Rescue, we love helping in situations like this. Um, We actually offer uh, pack walks on the weekends at our Pine Street shelter. And this is open to anyone. And it's it's a great way for our trainers to lead these pack walks. Um, It's a way for animals to socialize with other animals as well as as other people. Can, I'm um, sorry, can you explain what do you mean by a pack walk? Yeah, so we meet outside of our Pine Street shelter um, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, right now, I, I believe we're starting at 9 a.m. due to the heat. Um, but we we just have large groups led by our trainers, um, and we are able to keep a safe distance uh, of other pets, but it's also a way that you can ask our trainers questions and, again, get them socialized with other animals being in close proximity, but also... Um, you know, other people as well. So that is something that we offer just for added socialization. Um, but there are our training classes available, especially, you know, with an animal that young um, to kind of socialize with other animals and work on their behaviors with, with people. And once you kind of learn a, a safe way to introduce them to new people and new animals, you can kind of practice that on your own um, in different environments, as long as you, you know, you feel comfortable with the the routine. Right. So, and then finally, you had mentioned also people going on vacations, and they haven't gone on vacations for a long time. What do you tell people to do about temporary shelters for their pets if they're traveling? Yeah, so, you know, there are lots of resources as far as there's boarding facilities um, that they can can board their animals. Obviously, um, one of the the best routes would probably be, uh, you know, a pet sitter or someone coming into your home. It's a little less stressful for your pets to to not have to go to a new environment um, like that. But obviously, you know, whatever resource works works best for your situation is is obviously better than maybe returning your pet. Andrea, I believe, Andrea, we're having a really hard time. Your your, uh, connection seems to be breaking up a bit. And I am really grateful for your advice today. Uh, That's Andrea Wilkie. She's the Director of Operations at Stray Rescue. Thank you so much for joining us. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio.
Understanding starts here. If you learned something new from today's episode, consider leaving us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the easiest way to help people discover our show. We appreciate it. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.